Welcome to the One More Thing podcast. Today, it's me and Dr. Bauckham. That's right. It's it was a, it was us this weekend, too. It's a Troy and Larry show this weekend. That's right. So Awesome. Uh, so let me let me start by asking a couple of questions about hope. You really led the, the way for yeah. this whole talk. And uh, one of the things that we started with was a video about a, a guy named Eric, who is a uh, attended Suncoast for 10 or 12 years, off and on. Right. And uh, But he was through a mishap in a swamp, long story short, but a swam in water he shouldn't be swimming in, and an alligator bit his arm and tore his arm off. Yep. And uh, then lived for three days in the swamp before he could find his way back out and still survived. And the irony to me is here's a guy that wanted to die going in. It wasn't like he was going to the swamp because he felt good. He, he was depressed and just didn't want to live. Right. But a guy that when he came out of the swamp, he has a more, uh, he's more intent on living now than he ever was before. Yeah. So this terrible thing that happened to him set him up for possibly a better life. Yeah. Better with one arm wanting to live than two arms wanting to die. Yeah. And uh, so we, we use that as, uh, as one of the catalysts for the theme that we already had set up, which is hope. Right. So how do you think hope fits in this Christmas season for you? I mean, how do you see that it fits in for us as a community? Why, why do we even mention the word hope? Yeah, I think using Eric's story, I got to hang out with him that day we filmed the video. And I think it befits the heart of our community here is that it doesn't matter what your situation is, what your circumstances. It's not that we we kind of cast it off as being unimportant. But what I love about you, Dr. Bauckham, is that you you know a lot about my life and what I'm going through and the struggles that I'm having, you know, being so far away from my kids. And you do this in a very wise way. You don't discount or invalidate my feelings about the turmoil. And this is what I learned from you. But you always push me towards, in our community, towards there are better things ahead. There are better things ahead. Trust God. Don't just... Trust God with your words, trust God with your actions, with your thoughts, with any thought that tries to sort of, I guess, take over your frame of mind, your mindset. Fight against it knowing that God has a better plan, that right. there's better things ahead. And to keep a focus on that, I think that's what Eric did. You know, you know, there was that moment in the video where he said he felt like God asked him, hey, if you have nothing, if you have no reason to live, then give up. And then he said, I couldn't find a reason to give a up. reason to give up <laughs> because when we and it's something we said from the stage is that when I feel like my life is down to nothing, hope is knowing that God is up to something right. that it can't. Life can only do so much to me. People can only do so much to me. They can only say so much about me, but there's better things ahead. And I think at our community. You know, we have a lot of people walking through struggles way more traumatic mm -hmm. than the one I'm walking through or what others are walking through. But it that's all relative. Right. In the scheme of God's sort of idea about us. And that when I trust him, when I lean into God's understanding, my understanding broadens itself and I know it, what I'm going through now. Like I said, I'm not buried. I'm planted, right. and something good can grow from this if I allow it. So so tell me about the acronym that uh, Heather was telling you about at the end of the service. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful encounter. Um, you've, you've told stories about her finding her way here at all cost, going to an Amscot, trying to get money to get a cab, right, to cash right. a check. And she was here Sunday. And she just came up to me and she just said, hey, I just want to hug your neck. I've seen you on YouTube. I've watched your sermons and now I get to meet you in person. And when she told me who she was, I, I immediately recognized her from your story. And she came up to me after, at the end of our second service and she said, I just want to tell you something. And she had like, she was, she was kind of teary eyed. She said, I have an acronym for hope. Feel free to use it whenever you want. I said, well, hit me with it. And she goes, hope, hold on. Pain ends. And man, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was really, really moving for me because we had just had, a, I right. think, a very powerful, impactful sermon and a good video to kind of illustrate what hope is. And then she comes and gives me that acronym. And I just thought it was 
It was so appropriate. When I was a teenager, of course, I grew up in the church and in the youth group at church, but I, my pastor would say this, you know, sometimes you get an, uh, an expression that you repeat, and I'm sure you and I both do the same thing, but he had one that I remember to this day, and he would say, you know, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Yeah. And, and he would say it, and then a couple weeks later he'd say, you know, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. So we would kind of, uh, you know, one of the highest forms of, of compliment is to mock someone or to yeah. re, or to imitate them. That's right. So we'd imitate him sometimes when you get to the end. Of, but that is such a good expression. I mean, hang on, pain ends. Yeah. Hold on. I mean, just hold on to the end of the rope. Yeah. And sometimes it seems like on our journey, uh, when we're in a pool of deep water, the best we can do is tread water. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. But we're not going under. Yeah. And we're just going to tread water until all of a sudden we regain our strength. The wind of the spirit gets under the the sails of our life and all of a sudden we begin to move across the water again mm-hmm. but we we just have to hang in there yeah and hope really is uh to me it's just hanging in there you yeah. know there's something better and there is if you'll see it that's right so often the better that i'm looking for is already there yeah yeah i just need to have oh god open the open the eyes of my life my heart my my physical eyes so that i can see what what's already there because yeah. it's usually there i just i need to shift my perspective that's it uh, my 96 year old mother is alive and doing very well she lives in st petersburg and uh, you know she gets up she retired at 92 years old and she goes through her day she lives in a, a, a small condo not expensive and she lives on a very meager amount of social security she and her husband and they are pleasant and happy and content in life mm-hmm. and i see people that have multiple multiples of her income yeah struggle and disappointed and frustrated because it just becomes a, a battle yep and i i don't know uh, why people some people it seems like they're not uh, i won't say they're not content but it seems like they're always in a battle either with their spouse right or their ex yeah or their kids or their lack of uh, confidence or they're, you know, just whatever. Yeah. They're, they're just struggling. And yeah. to those people, I would love to say, Hey, what you need is a good dose of hope is that the best version of me is not yet here, but it's close. That's and it right. Can be. And become better. That's it. Man, my, I love my wife. She, uh, she constantly just reminds me to be grateful and to be hopeful, you know, in our situation. But, you know, I, if, if I can't find purpose in the pain that I'm experiencing, right. then it's going to destroy me. It's going to, it's right. going to, everything's going to collapse on me. I had a friend in Louisiana. His name was Toby. Amazing athlete, man. He, he jumped 10 feet in the air. Man, an amazing athlete. Had a scholarship and blew out a knee. And he and his family had to go through a whole, like, plethora of just hoops and red tape with his insurance company. And ended up costing him tens and tens of thousands of dollars to repair his knee. He lost all of his 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 future in sports. Then they had a little boy named Ty, a little baby, a couple of years later, and he was born with like congenial heart problems. And Ty always would end up being depressed about his knee and losing his, you know, his 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 ability to provide for his family through his love and passion for sports, you know, playing basketball. But when Ty was born with that heart failure, he had already gone through all of the insurance rigmarole that he knew how to navigate it. And we always call it little baby Ty the million dollar baby because all of the heart problems ended up costing like three or four million dollars, but they paid zero. Hmm. And it was only because he could see, you know, hindsight's always 2020. He learned how to negotiate and navigate the insurance claims and stuff to, to, to save his baby boy. Right. And that's the idea is, is you have to tell yourself, hope is saying, I've gone through all this crap. Now I can withstand it. Now I have, you know, I've adapted. And it's, it's like now I can, I can hold on because right. I've been through the storm. I know what to expect. And for me, that's the greatest light of hope is to know, hey, I've been through this before. I've been through something similar. And that's why I love testimonies and right. sharing right. stories because I go, if, if, 
if Pastor Larry can make it through that, so can I. Right. If this person can make it through it, so can I. Because the same God who lives in him is in me. And so, yeah, tie that knot at the end of the rope and hold on. I agree. And a lot of it's perspective. For example, I had a shot on my left arm for pneumonia. I reached the age where I need a pneumonia shot. And then I got a flu shot in the other sh shoulder. And I come in, I go, man, I'm just whining because both my arms are like I had tetanus shot in both arms. They're both just throbbing and hurt. And I see Eric without one arm. Yeah. And you go, okay, I'm fine. And then I see... Uh, perspective for those who are fussing about their kids. They're disruptive. They're unruly. They're, they're driving their parents absolutely crazy. And then I see you say, I'd like for my kids to be around more to drive me crazy. Yeah. And then, but I want them more. And then I see people say, I'd love to have a child. And yeah. our whole life, we've not been able to have a child. And That's they spend, right. they spend a lot of money to try to in vitro this perspective. Yeah. But, uh, then my friend Pete Abbott, who's a good good guy, yeah. he said, you know, years ago, everybody throws their problems on the table. And you look at everybody else's, you decide to take yours back. Because <laughs> <laughs> my problems are That's right. really insignificant. But part of what makes us greater is to look at the issues of our life mm -hmm. and try to resolve those. Yeah. And sometimes it brings us frustration when we can't. Yeah. Whether it's financial, relational, health-wise. I mean, uh, you know... If, if someone said, oh, you're, you're really f frustrated about your finances, you live in a nice house, you drive a nice car, you shouldn't be frustrated. I know, I know, I know I shouldn't be. Yeah. What about your family? I shouldn't be, you know, I'm, I have healthy kids that don't have a heart defect. Yeah. I shouldn't be. But but I love this about you when you said that earlier, but God cares about every detail of my life, even if I'm stuck looking at something as insignificant yeah. as it really is. That's right. He still cares about me. That's right. And he knows I'm trying to work through it, and he's gracious and patient with me, whereas everyone else is just say, get, come on. Yeah. You know, get real. Get, That's right. Pull, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. Why are you depressed? Because, you know, your your uh, LSU Tigers lost. That's right. For heaven's <laughs> sakes. That's I mean, right. They get beat by Florida State earlier in the year. I, you didn't hear me brag about that. That's right. No, all I heard is a whining about it. Let's throw the positive thing. Florida State just kicked the fire out of the Gators. We need to proclaim all the good things. That's right. That's Not right. whine about the Bucks losing, which I still whine about that a little bit. But, right, right. Uh, but, you know, but at the end of the day, we come back and say, but, you know, God knows me. Mm -hmm. And he knows my heart. Yep. And he knows some days I'm better than others. Yep. And some days my perspective's off, and some days it's on. And some days I really don't want him to realign my perspective. Yep. Because sometimes that's a painful that's right. process. That's right on. Uh, so here we are today realizing that what's the hope? The hope of glory mm -hmm. is that God is with us. He lives in us. He always has. He always will. Yep. And I celebrate that as I look down that front row and I saw the bereavement happening. Yeah. I looked around and saw someone else who just had family. And there were tears saying, oh, I just, you don't understand how my family is and yep. just weepy. And I saw someone else, you know, talked about, I, I've lost hope in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are all different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And we just try to love them all. Yeah. Let them see the Jesus in us. And forgive me, Father, when I don't do that better. Yeah. Because I, I should. I know better. And, uh, Still, sometimes I get, I get blinded by my, by me. That's right. So, yeah. but anyway, it was a great day. It was. We had fun on stage. Yeah. We're gonna come back and talk about some other Advent thoughts, peace, and yeah. uh, and love, peace, and joy, and waiting. Yeah. Over the next few weeks, we have a lot of good things. And Christmas Eve is gonna be a blast. But, yes. Uh, uh, can't wait. I can't either. So I look forward to. Either you being on the stage or me being on the stage or us being together. That's so right. So as we do it, we simply do it, uh, you know, to make a difference in our community. Yeah, I think we're doing that. I think we are. So awesome. It's, it's good to be with you today. You as well. Thanks, Dr. Bach.